the LG Optimus View 3. Not a lot of people even know this phone exists. It's a phone that launched in 2013, eight long years ago. Now, am I crazy to say this is a good buy in 2021? Now, I picked it up used for about $100 and it is probably one of the best handled emulation experiences I've had in a long, long time. And believe me, I've tried a lot of things. So why is it so good? Let's find out in yet another C4E Tech video on retro games. Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech and if you end up liking this video, hit like. Simple. Anyways, the industry, smartphone industry has been moving in a very weird direction. Very early on, manufacturers figured that people have this innate feeling that bigger is better. When the original Galaxy Note came out, at 5.3 inches, critics were pretty dismissive. They felt Samsung had a crisis of identity. Is it a phone? Is it a tablet? But from the 5.3 inches back then to 6.5 plus being the new norm, we've come a long way. It's not just that display sizes have grown, they've evolved. That's the politest way of putting it, I guess. The key here is aspect ratios, four by three. Now this is what old CRT TVs were based on. When we went HD, manufacturers switched to 16 by nine. There was a solid reasoning behind it. A lot of movies were shot 21 by nine and 16 by nine was a nice little middle, middle ground between 21 by nine movies and four by three uh, video, I mean, TV content. Now four by three can also be called 12 by nine. So 21 by nine, 12 by nine, what's in between 16 by nine. So that's basically what they went with to keep black bars minimal in both cases. This change affected the entire industry. TV shows moved from four by three to 16 by nine. Gaming consoles started supporting widescreen that's 16 by nine. Now this is very important. So let's just put a tiny little pin on it and get back to the phones now. Now, there is a reason why TV manufacturers have stuck to 16 by nine for a long, long, long time, almost two decades. Why? Because going any wider, despite movies being 21 by 9 predominantly, despite that helping them with marketing larger screens, it's still going to be risky because adoption might suck. The space on people's walls, it's limited after all. Because when they were moving from regular TVs to HD, they could stretch it because the overall size of the TV was going down. So people weren't really using the same old uh, entertainment, entertainment centers and all that. Now with phones though, aspect ratios, they've been constantly changing. 16 by 9, 18 by 9, 18.5 by 9, 19 by 9, 19.5 by 9, 20, 21. And in one weird case, 27 by 9. I have mixed feelings about this. One, yes, this means phones are getting narrower. So despite size increases, they're still not getting very difficult to wield. Like think Mi Max 1 with its 6.44 inch screen. It was a nightmare to hold. Now 6.44 inches doesn't sound like a lot today, but given the Mi 11 Ultra after all has a 6.8 inch panel, but that was 16 by nine, this is 20 by nine. So from a width perspective, if you're gonna compare, the Mi Max was about 20% wider than the Ultra. So in a way, ergonomics have improved over time, but with media, a lot of it is 16 by nine. So we do end up with black bars. Yes, the likes of YouTube and Netflix do allow us to pinch the zoom, but it is zoom after all, right? So it doesn't work very well all the time. Personally, I rarely ever use it out of fear that I'd miss out on something that I shouldn't have. So what about you? Do you pinch to zoom on say Netflix, YouTube? Let me know in the comments below. Now coming back, here's a bit of math. Let's take a look at this phone. This is the LG Optimus View 3. It has a four by three aspect ratio screen. Uh, remember the pin from earlier in this video? Let's get back to it. Old consoles from the times before HDTVs, they were outputting at four by three too. So almost all games, they were, they were developed for this aspect ratio. So when you're comparing this with this, you can't directly compare a 6.81 to a 5.2. Well, it's true the diagonal on a modern phone is longer. You're still gonna be playing retro games in four by three, which like I said earlier, can also be called 12 by nine. So a 20 by nine aspect ratio display, you're gonna be wasting about 40% of the screen real estate with black bars. So effectively you're ending up with a four point something uh, inches of display real estate for retro gaming. Uh, to get this kind of 5.2 inches on say a 21 by nine aspect ratio panel like the one Sony uses, you're gonna need to have a 7.8 inch screen. That's not really an option, right? At, at least until we go all fold, we go all in on foldables. 
So this is what makes the Optimus View 3 perfect. It's available for like 100 US dollars on eBay and other sources. If you buy it locally on a Dubizil or OLX or Craig's, Craig's list, you should be able to get it a lot cheaper, which makes it an amazing deal. Now this phone is unexpectedly fast. It's got a Snapdragon 800 chip, old, yes, but the performance here, I feel it's better than even uh, what you'd find on a lot of 10K phones today. And here's another thing. Remember this came out as a flagship tablet, right? Despite that, it's only 160 grams. You don't really find any phones of that weight today. I mean, you do, but they do come with teeny tiny displays. There's a headphone jack. There is support for a stylus. And yes, it's not as good as the S Pen, but it's still decent for browsing and whatnot. Uh, now, one problem with old phones is the fact that the battery degrades. These days, when that happens, brands want us to swap to a newer phone. 2013, 2014, 2015, Back then, it wasn't that way yet. Brands hadn't become complete So the View 3, it has a user replaceable battery. So you can find replacements for this, as I've done, uh, from AliExpress to replace it if you need. And given micro SD support, yeah, that's also there. Your entire ROM library can be loaded onto it. Now, for those who haven't been following retro gaming, the go-to for retro consoles today, uh, with regards to the internals, it's the Rockchip RK3288. And the Snapdragon 800 on the View 3 quite comfortably outperforms it. The LG Optimus View 3 would get you a larger screen. Yes, you don't get integrated controls, but you can add something like this and it's a pretty compact and competent gaming solution. Uh, one with an easily replaceable battery, a higher resolution than almost all retro handles today. And I mean, it's just overall a very competent emulation device. Now, yes, I've been saying competent a lot, but how does it actually do with games? This video is not going to be complete without me talking about that, right? So this here is PSP Gaming God of War. See how smooth it is. But sadly, PSP is a 16 by 9 console, so we get display real estate cut. Uh, we do get black bars to the top and bottom. Here's the PS1. Beautiful, right? Guys, the Snapdragon 800 is a 32 bit chip, so that rules out Dolphin Emulator. No GameCube or Wii here. Can't do PS2 either due to the lack of power, but for the rest, SNES. Name, Game Boy Color. Game Boy Advance. Even Nintendo DS. As you can see, the experience is exemplary. I bought this for my own use and I've been on the hunt for the perfect retro gaming experience and I feel this one's gotten me pretty close. Now, what do you think? Do you think the LG View 3 should have been done better? Do you feel LG should have done better? Basically, the fact that LG doesn't exist today as a smartphone brand, uh, They've done so many innovative things over the years and I feel like this, I really wanted to do this video about the View 3. This is one of the very, uh, what do you say, underrated phones from LG. So what do you guys think about it? Uh, do you feel this is the best retro experience you can get or do you feel uh, there's something else that would provide you a better retro experience? Let me know your experience. Uh, I've said experience a lot. I'm sorry about that. In the comments below. And I guess that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching till this point. Uh, giving me the time of your day. If you like the video, leave a thumbs up and a comment. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4E Tech and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.